Hello and welcome to Rathod's IES. Today in this session, we are going to see current fights of 3rd March 2024. So I want to share this information with you students that I got a very good reviews. Okay. So in one day I got around 150 reviews. So I am feeling very much happy. So please show your support like this and please do encourage me. And if anyone who are left to give the reviews, so please do give the reviews and I am posting you the link of that Google reviews in the description box. So please use that and try to rate and review so that it will be very helpful for me and this will be encouraging me. So in this way you can show your support to me like we are with you ma'am. Okay. And okay without wasting any time so we are going to say this analysis and one more comment that i find was like so many of them they are liking my teaching but many of them they are not knowing about me and about my name so my name is usha and i am the current geography and ethics faculty of rathod is and one more thing here is i am also the co-founder of this rathod is academy Okay, so if you want to join this Rathod Science Academy either offline or online, so if you want to talk to me directly, you can call on this number 8074765513. Okay, and one more thing here is if you are staying in Hyderabad, you can come and you can directly contact me in office. Okay, so if you message me on WhatsApp on this number, I will be sharing the location. So as of now, we didn't have any flexes so we gave order the flexes so flexes will be coming soon it will be taking around five days of time okay so many students are saying that i'm not finding any flexes in ashok nagar so the reason here is we gave order but they had not been yet delivered okay so soon we are going to have this flexes and this ratur science academy is there near paradise opposite to vijay medicals and it is like third and fourth floor okay in, in shweta enclave yeah so now let us see this front page of hindu so in this front page i found nothing much relevant and today is sunday so many students have the tendency to skip the sunday's newspaper so please don't do that because you will be having science and technology page and also you can cover environment and ecology related current fights from your sunday's newspaper okay is that clear Yes, now let us move on to the city page. So in the city page also I found nothing much important. And wherever I am seeing like any other case study which is relevant from our ethics point of view, I will let you know and I will give you some content like what you have to focus everything. I will be giving you the detailed thing so that here from current affairs point of view, we are also going to cover case studies from now onwards because it is very important. Yeah, now let us see the states page. So in the states page, I found like two or three articles relevant. So now let us see those and I'm going to give you even dimensions like how you have to think because so this will be not gonna teach you anywhere else. Okay, and many students who are cracking UPSC through self preparation. Okay, through self study. So if you want to crack upsc within very less time and within less number of attempts is you have to develop this skill for sure because you have to write your own perspectives in mains and in interview also the questions will be based on your perspectives so this multi-dimension approach of current fights will give you good knowledge why because about 70 to 80 percentage of your paper is your current fights so if you are good in current affairs and if you have a good command on current affairs and if you have a capability to think in a multi-dimensional manner, then no one will stop you. So this is 100% sure. Okay. Yeah. Now let us see important articles from this states page. And there is very less articles you are present in today's paper. So that you can save some time in today's newspaper and you can spend on CSAT. Yeah, CSAT is also very important. And don't ignore CSAT. 
okay so in this page i found there are articles which are relevant yes so this is the article which is relevant title says election commission calls for strong action against officials indulging in favoritism okay so there is a concept of favoritism which is going on so because of this favoritism here is the election commission is saying that yes we are going to have the strong action against officials who are showing favoritism okay election commission directed the district magistrates and superintendents of police to take strong action against officials who are indulging in this favoritism yes this topic is important from your case study also you can get this topic as a case study now let us see the dimension so this article is talking about election commission is saying that district magistrates or like dcs and superintendent of police that is sp to take action against officials to take action against officials who are involved in this favoritism so here you have to focus on this election commission so here in polity which comes under your gs paper 2 so we have this topic of election commission so you will be read in this constitutional bodies under article 324 of our indian constitution we have this election commission of india so can i say it is a constitutional body yes of course so this election commission of india is a constitutional body under this article 324 so many students who are beginners you have to know about three types of bodies we have so first one is constitutional bodies okay so first one is constitutional bodies second one is non constitutional bodies okay we are also having this executive bodies so we have to focus on these two okay or we can also call like other bodies if any article if any article in our constitution which talks about this body then that is called as constitutional body for example election commission and we have finance commission so like that those bodies are constitutional bodies and non constitutional bodies means nothing but if any act came up by the parliament so with that act whenever we are coming up with establishment of any body that bodies are called as non constitutional bodies for example national human rights commission state human rights commission like that and we have other bodies so whenever any body which came into existence or establishment through a resolution through a resolution of government that is called as other bodies or executory bodies so these are three different kinds of bodies that you have to know and this election commission of india is a constitutional body so i think it is clear right and you have to see like members so we have normally three members so one will be c is the chief election commissioner and we have two other election commissioners so here in this perspective you have to know what is a tenure so what is the eligibility criteria whether they are eligible for reappointment or not and you have to see like so what is the appointment process and recently this ec and cec they were in use so there is a chance of getting question in your prelims in this election commission of india so it is for sure okay and you have to see like what are the challenges which are facing by this ec and what is the way forward so all these are the dimensions which are important from your prelims and mains and now there is another word that is favoritism so we are going to see that separately 
ओके फेवरेट इज एंड दिस टॉपिक इज इंपॉर्टेंट फ्रॉम योर जीएस पेपर फोर अंडर एथिक्स so there is a high chance of getting same scenario as a case study okay same scenario as a case study like they will be uh, saying like you are a district magistrate and you found that your subordinates you are showing favoritism so here in that context so what are the options you have so they will be elaborate in the situation like they are favoring so and so people in so and so schemes like that and what are the options available to you and which option you are going to choose and this favoritism is important from this chapter called as probability in governance okay probability in governance and here you can also see some more important dimensions like what is this favoritism so what is the impact of this favoritism and how can you address and you can also add one more chapter here that is attitude so how can we change the attitude of people who are showing this favoritism so these are the some dimensions that you have to see from gs paper 4 under ethics right so these are the some important things that you have to think about So are you getting the points? Like how you have to connect this current affairs with the static? Yes or no? So if you are understanding this point, so please do hit the like button and don't forget to rate and review this Rathore Science Academy. So the link is given in the description box. So don't forget. Okay. So if you are giving this rating and if you are giving the reviews, then that will be very helpful for me. Okay. So if you want to support me and if you want to encourage me, so please do that favor. okay yeah now let us move on to next important topic that is about iaf finishes black topping of landing strip near lac so here we have to focus on this keyword that is lac so we are going to see that in detail and this topic is important from your international relations point of view so i will be drawing a rough map Okay, so this is a very rough map. So this is our northern India, right? So here we have boundary with Pakistan, and even here we have around one not eight kilometers of boundary with Afghanistan. So this is Afghanistan part. So it is a rough diagram, and here we have China. See what a location of India. So we are having enemies on the both the sides. So one side Pakistan, one side China. So because of this, we always need to focus on defense. So in our defense, we have army, we have navy, we have air force. okay so why we need to have a good defense and why we are spending more on defense because of these two factors pakistan factor and china factor so if we talking about india and pakistan border so we have loc that is line of control loc and here so we have boundary between india and china that is lac line of actual control and here in this part we have aksai chin okay so this part which is given to china okay so it is not given by india but this region is gifted by pakistan to china okay so now what is the issue issue we have to go back to march April twenty twenty. So from March April twenty twenty onwards, Chinese army and Indian army, so they are having a standoff. Okay, so military standoff between India and China, which is going on, 
even that led to one violence so in that violence 19 indian soldiers did died near this pong yong so lake and after this standoff yes we went for more than 24 i can't remember the exact number but it is more than 24 rounds of talks between india and china but still there is no complete resolution of the issue there are some areas still which are under control of china for example we have different patrolling points so patrolling point like 15 pp15 and Damchok, Debsung Plains. Okay, so those are the areas which are under control of China and there is no status quo which had been fined still across this LAC region. So this is the issue that we have to see. And here you can see one more important concept is India-China relations. <laughs> Sorry. So this topic it is about India-China relations. Yeah, this article is important from international relations from GS paper too. So there is a chance of getting both prelims and mains based question. And one more thing here is you have to focus especially on challenges. Yes, tell me what are the challenges between India and China? First one is trade issue and China is using veto especially in some organizations like UNSC and it is stopping India's entry into permanent country status and even China is stopping India entry into this NSG nuclear supplier group. And even China is coming up with building of border villages. Okay, villages are building at our Indian border so that it will be very easy for China to occupy this area. That means I can say like, so China's aggressive expansionist policy. Okay, so problem here is China's aggressive expansionist policy. And Chinese BRI, that is Belt and Road Initiative. So under this, there is one component called as CPEC, China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. So actually it is passing through this Pak occupied Kashmir. And India is saying that it is an integral part of India. So without permission of India, how can you develop that project? This is one issue. And even the countries which are in favor of India like Maldives, Nepal, Bhutan, they are moving towards China. It is also one cause of concern. And even you can talk about string of pearls. Okay, string of pearls is also one important issue. And to counter this, we came up with this fish hook. India's fish hook policy. And even in many organizations, India and China, they are both members. So in that organizations, Yes, we are having some cause of concern and especially you can write about this LAC issue and actually China wants to occupy entire Arunachal Pradesh region and we have some issues with China across border. Okay, for example, we are having issue with China in eastern sector, in central sector, in western sector. You can write this thing. And even one more new issue that you can add here is water wars. So here China wants to build a dam on river Brahmaputra. So here if you see whenever China is coming with the dam in this river Brahmaputra like this. So it is upper riparian state and lower riparian state. So lower riparian state will be depend upon this upper riparian state for the water in the rivers. So if it is stopping the river water by building the dam here, the layer will be the less flow of water. So that here this dam will be affecting food security, agriculture, water security of this lower riparian state. So this is also one important issue. So these are some important issues between India and China. Okay. So here you have to understand what is the way forward. So this is the thing that you have to remember. 
and here you can see very important topic that is Shah launches umbrella body for urban cooperative banks. So for urban cooperative banks, our union cooperative minister, he launched this National Urban Cooperative Finance and Development Corporation Limited. So here we have to focus on this body. So what is that? And you are going to see that in detail. Okay, let us see the notes. Yeah, after many days, I came up with this motivational quote. So actually the problem is uh, uploading video is taking like, I will be taking around one hour to record the class. Okay. And it will be taking like more than two hours to upload video and to post the video. So that is a problem. And because of the shifting of this recording room here and there. So again, there are technical glitches and I have to reach this office and it will be taken out 45 minutes of journey in the early morning to reach the office and to go, it will be taking like uh, around more than one hour to reach my off, uh, my home from office because at that time traffic jams, traffic will be huge and in the early morning, so I will be starting around 6.30, okay, I will be starting recording by 7.30 a.m. and by 8.30 I will be completing and it will be taking a lot of time. So uh, from today onwards, I thought that yes, I have to post the video at least fast. Okay, so I came up with this. And now we are going to say this quote. And so this quote which motivated me and I thought that why can't, to, uh, why can't I post this video fast? Okay, earlier, at least one hour earlier. So let us see what it is going to happen today, whether I will be, whether will I post this video at least half an hour to one hour before or not. Yesterday it was like around 12 to post this video. So I will be seeing like whether can I post this video at least by 10.30 or not. So this quote which motivated me today. So I don't know how many people they will be get motivated by this quote. Nothing is impossible. The word itself says I am possible. Impossible itself says that I am possible. So many students, they will be leaving this preparation and they will be searching for other alternatives after giving two attempts or single attempt like that. So please don't do that. So whatever the try you are doing, so do it completely so that at any cost you will be getting successful. So whenever you are preparing, so you have to give your 100%. So whenever you are giving 100% automatically, the success will come to you. Okay. Yeah, now let us see this article. So here context says that our union cooperation minister Amit Shah, he inaugurated what umbrella organization and this is focusing on urban cooperative banks. So that is National Urban Cooperative Finance and Development Corporation Limited. So if we're talking about details, it says that it is necessary that we have to upgrade ourselves. So day by day, we have to upgrade ourselves with our knowledge. So with the policies, etc. And we have to adhere to all the regulations of this RBI, RBI Central Bank or Reserve Bank of India, right? So if we fail to do so, we will not be able to sustain the competition. So if you're not upgrading, then we will be not sustaining the competition. So even you can take me as example. So earlier, I used to write notes. It will be taking like two hours of time. At that time, I used to wake up at four o'clock. Okay, I used to write. Later on, I shifted to using of system to type the data. And now we are using this digital board to take the class. So you can see how we are, uh, we are imbibing the technology. So in the same way, we have to be upgrading ourselves day by day. So if I'm not upgrading with the current efforts, you will be not accepting me as a current efforts. And my goal it is to become a top faculty of current efforts in India. So it is my uh, aim. And if I want to be or if I need to reach that goal means I have to upgrading myself. Yes or no? So upgrading is very important so that you will be sustaining in the competition. So in this highly competitive world, if you want to sustain, you need to upgrade every day and also our minister he highlighted that a major role of organization it is to prepare small banks for compliance with the banking regulation act okay so whatever the act which are there so we have to follow those acts and we have to follow those rules 
And if you have seen some facts regarding this National Urban Cooperative Finance and Development Corporation Limited, so this is an organization and I can say it is an umbrella body and it is supporting the goal of Sahakar Se Samriddhi. Okay, Sahakar Se Samriddhi to promote self reliance in India. Okay, so we are promoting self reliance through this umbrella body, especially regarding this urban cooperative banks. And the important objective of this urban, uh, sorry, this urban cooperative banks and this umbrella body, it is to modernize. So we have to modernize and we have to reinforce the urban cooperative banking sector. So it is one of the important objective. And if you're talking about important features, it will also function as self-regulatory organization for the sector. Okay, it is also functioning as a self-regulatory organization of the sector. And it will also sp offer specialized functions. It will also offer specialized functions and services to this cooperative banks. Okay, and it will also facilitate communication between the banks and regulators. And it also helps to tackle the challenges encountered by this urban cooperative banks. And this body it has been granted a certificate of registration by this RBI. Okay. And next important significance here is it is focusing on economic growth. Okay, so this body will be always focusing on its economic growth. So how here is it will be supporting this urban cooperative banks and it will also help the small farmers, weaker sections indirectly so that it will be helpful for expansion of economic activities. So whenever there is expansion of economic activities that will lead to economic growth automatically. And next one is it also facilitates policy making. So it always facilitates policy making. Like so this umbrella body it is a coordinating unit between bank and regulator. So it is a coordinating unit between banks and regulators. And even it will help central and as a state government in making of policy. And this policy making will be done based on the ground reality of sectors like how those certain sectors are working. So based on that, they will be saying like, what are the loopholes, what are the challenges? And based on that, they will be coming with the policy that will address the challenges. That will help for the improvement of the performance of certain sectors. And they will be also providing this assistance, that is financial assistance, so that these banks, they can raise capital. And that capital can be used as a support for this urban cooperative banks. And that will also help for sharing of technology in the platform. Clear and next one is technological advancements. So the organization which aims to incorporate new technology in this urban cooperative banking sector. So that will help in fast coverage of the work. And next one is even that will be helpful in this technological platforms because it will provide a, an improved service offerings and even it will be reducing this operational cost and address the te uh, technical or technological constraints. So in this way here, so this body will be helpful for economic growth. Clear? So this is about this topic. And now let us move back to the page. Yes, here you can see one more important topic. It is talking about three-party agreement. So, tri-party agreement. So, tri means nothing but three. So, this agreement is between three parties. So, one will be central government. Next will be state government. And third one is important that is tripra. Okay, tripra. Tripra. So, these are the three parties who are involved. Especially, it is talking about tri-party agreement. So, it is very important. So, this is related to the state of Tripura. Okay, it is related to the state of Tripura. So, here you have to see some dimensions. So, this article is talking about tri-party agreement. Okay, tri-party is nothing but between three parties. State, center and Tripura. And especially, you have to connect this topic with Northeast. 
So please let me know how many of you know exact location of this northeastern states. Tell me honestly in the comment box. So many of them, they don't know exact location of this northeastern states and they will be confusing. So as a UPSC aspirant, you have to know the location of each and every state in our country. At least in our country, I'm not talking about entire world. At least in our state, you, at, at least in your state, you have to know the districts. Uh, at least in your country, you have to know where exactly the states are located. Especially northeastern states. Because many a time, UPSC will be asking the questions like, so if you want to move from one area to another area, how many minimum states you can cross? Right? So from that point of view, I'm saying you have to know the location of the states and the names of the states. And especially this northeast is famous for communal violence, for example, recent Manipur issue. And you have to see like what are the challenges faced by these northeastern states. For example, even you can add about this Bodo land and also Naga. Okay, that is Greater Nagalim. And you can also talk about this Tipra. Okay, and you have to see like what is the way forward. So in this way, you have to connect entire Northeast. What are the challenges in which state and what is the way forward. And this article is at most important. So let us see this topic. And this topic is important from your internal security point of view. So if you see context, it says that the government of India, government of Tripura and Tipraha Indigenous Progressive Regional Alliance, that is Tipra, they signed a three-party agreement. So why? To address the issues of indigenous people of Tripura. And these indigenous people, they contribute about 33% of population of that state. And if you see some more important details to given, the agreement contains the formation of joint working committee and they are focusing on even resolving of issues related to history, land rights, political rights, economic development, identity, culture and language. So these are some important issues. Okay. So here this agreement which is going to resolve these issues like history, land rights, political rights, economic development, identity, culture and language. And this Tipra has become a major player in state politics. And even they are demanding for greater Tipra land or a separate state for this indigenous population. So in the northeastern states, the important population here is these tribal groups who are in the majority in the states. They are demanding for the separate state. So this is the one problem. So you can write about example of this Tipra land or like greater Nagalim like that you can come up with the examples and you have to write examples for sure in the examination so that you can attract examiner towards you and you can get little more marks also at least half to one mark more than others. And if you see this Tripura world is located so this is Tripura and is located here. Okay, it is very, very important location of Tripura. And now if you are talking about some facts regarding this greater Tripura land, the part is they are demanding a separate state that is greater Tripura land for indigenous communities of this northeastern state. And they want to carve out the separate state under Article 2 and Article 3 of Indian Constitution. And you have to know what is this Article 2. So article 2 says that parliament, parliament may by law admit to the union or establish new states on such terms and conditions as it thinks fit. Okay, if parliament is thinking fit that it can come up with the establishment of new states under article 2. So here parliament cannot establish a new union territory by passing a law. Okay, but that is can be done only through the constitutional amendment. So if parliament want to come with a new state, yes it can. But if you want to create UT, so there is a need of constitutional amendment. So this is a prelims fact. And states like Sikkim, they became a part of the country under article 2. 
and article 3 which empowers the parliament to make laws which are related to the formation of new states and alteration of existing states so these are the two important articles that you have to remember regarding this greater nagaland as well as tripura land so what is the way forward what can be done so economic and social viability rather than political consideration should be given primacy so why they are demanding because of lack of development because of uh, there is no social inclusion so we have to focus on that we have to focus on economic and social viability like development skill upgradation health facilities education facilities and providing of standard decent livelihood etc so if we are focusing on that so they will be not asking this greater or like separate state and there should be a certain clear cut parameters and safeguards to check this issue and this one is we have to focus on development decentralization and governance rather than religion caste and language or dialect okay so these are the some important things that we can do here and apart from this fundamental problems of development and government deficit like concentration of power corruption administrative inefficiency they must be addressed so these are the some important things that you have to remember from this article point of view and now let us move on to next topic so here you can see one bubbly image so like this image so it is talking about hanguls so mating calls indicate endangered hanguls here on a comeback trail so as of now after we got independence so the number of this hanguls had been decreased drastically and especially from 2000 the number had been decreased a lot okay so by 2021 from 2000 the number has been increased to 261 that means so earlier before independence we had good number of population but now automatically that had been decreased so here you have to see some dimensions so remember this not only for this species but any species news you have to think about this about these dimensions so what is that species and in which state they are present so what is the geographical location like whether they are seen only in india or any other country okay so like that you have to see where they are located that means you can think about habitat okay and you have to see whether it is nocturnal or not because from this area also the question is asking and next one is you have to see like important national parks or wildlife sanctuaries where they are present and you have to see like conservation status according to sites and according to iucn red list according to wildlife protection act of 1972 so what is the protection status and you can see like what is the way forward and even you have to think what are the reasons for the decreasing of number so if any species that is you are seeing in news like animal species or plant species you have to see these things so there is a high chance of getting question so now let us see this topic in detail so this hangul is also called as kashmir stag okay kashmir stag so kashmir is highly shy and sensitive animal hangul which is listed as critically endangered in indigenous species of deer so it has reported that one of the healthier rooting or mating seasons in previous autumn so in previous autumn season so there is a good uh, percentage of mating that happened so that we are going to expect the new offspring soon okay so experts they suggested that the roles on the calls they made by hangers during rutting indicate that their number will cross 300 this spring so this is the first time in more than 3 decades so as of now around 216 uh, deers that is hangers are there so what happens so whenever animals you are mating so they want to mate so they will be mating in certain seasons like even street dogs okay even cattle so if you are rearing cattle or sheep or goat so you will be knowing about this uh, sounds they will be calling their mates okay especially during the time of releasing of eggs 
okay in a human in the animals so they will be some hormonal changes so because of this hormone so hormones they will be playing with the body of a female so i'm not telling that hormones are not there in male but even in male we have only one that is testosterone but in female there will be lots and lots of hormones like progesterone estrogen luteinizing hormone follicle stimulating hormone like that so here what happens during the time of releasing of x so because of this increasing and decreasing levels of certain hormones so here what happens so normally these females female animals they will be called in the male animals by the roads okay or the calls etc so what happened during the season okay so during the season of autumn so this is the normally the mating period of this animals and even now export experts this is suggested that they had good uh, roads and good calls are done by these animals so because of that we are expecting that the good mating had happened and after this mating obviously fertilization will happen and we are going to have the new born soon so in this uh, spring season so we are going to have this new borns so that is the thing which mainly said here so since 1947 the population of hangul it was like a sta state animal of jammu and kashmir so this sta stag that is kashmir stag or hangul so it is a state animal of jammu and kashmir so the number had been seen like a drastical decreasing okay around 1947 there were around 2000 they were spotted but by 1968 it had come down to 384 and recent estimates like in 2021 it was like around 261 and we are going to see this number will be increased to 300 Okay, so if you are talking about what are the important reasons for the decreasing of this number of animals is like because of increasing of stress in this forest areas, because of this increasing of stress in this forest areas, and because of increasing of human interventions like anthropological causes. So they are disturbing this habitat of this animals. And not only this, but even water is very important for survival. For even humans, if you are not drinking for water for after two to three years, uh, sorry, two to three hours, you will be feeling thirsty and you will be feeling giddiness like that, right? So it is not only for humans, but even for animals, plants, etc. So here, whenever there is no availability of water in the nearby vicinity, so these hangles they will be moving outside their habitat in search of water. so whenever they are moving outside their habitat so they will be coming across with the attacks by the other animals okay especially lactating females in summer they will be moving towards disturbed habitats in and outside this dachigam so normally this dachigam area is the one of the habitat where we can see this kashmir stag so especially this lactating women they need proper water okay if they are not getting enough water then their body will be dehydrating and they cannot produce enough milk for their young ones so at that time here this lactating females in summer they will be moving outside their habitats and they will uh, they will be like falling as a prey to the predators like dogs etc and other animals so here you have to know like what are the some facts regarding this kashmir stags so from these facts you can expect prelims based statements So we're talking about this Kashmir stag. It is called as Hangul. So it is a subspecies of Central Asian red deer, and it is present in Kashmir region and even in some other surrounding areas of Kashmir. So it is found in dense riverine forest with high valleys and mountains of Jammu and Kashmir, and even in the northern Himachal Pradesh also we can see a little number. So very less number of this Kashmir stag can be seen here. and in the kashmir it is found especially in this dachigam national park and it receives protection so here one more area where you can expect the question is so dachigam national park is seen recently in news so where it is located in which state so it is in jammu okay so in this way you can also get question and a small population has also been witnessed in over uh, aru wildlife sanctuary so it is also present in the south of kashmir so what is the conservation status so they are present in this critically endangered under this iucn list iucn red list and they are also listed under appendix 1 under under sites so now let us see some facts regarding this dachigam national park 
so the actual beauty of this park which is lies in the deep valleys we have rocky outcrops and we have steep wooded slopes alpine pastures so these are contribute to the scenic beauty of this national park and it is located in a mountainous area so dachigam national park faces a huge variation in an altitude which is ranging from 1600 meters to 4200 meters above the sea level and this variation altitude categorizes this dachigam national park into two regions so we have upper region we have lower region so if you see the flora so we have very rich wild cherry pear plum peach apple apricot walnut chestnut oak willow poplar chinar birch pine and elm so they are the flora flora means nothing but plant species and we have fauna so fauna like animals we have musk deer bear leopards jungle cats himalayan black bear and there are some few species of wild goats also seen in this region so this is about this topic and next we have to move on to the science and technology page so before that here yeah, in this world page there is one article so this article is also relevant from our science and technology so title says us military forces destroy houthi surface to air missiles surface to air missiles so here we have to see the keyword so keyword is missile okay keyword is missile and this topic is important from your science and technology especially from defense technology so in this missiles we have different types of missiles like surface to surface surface to air air to air missiles so you have to know examples and you have to know the range and for example we have missile like astra okay so we have missile like astra and we have missiles like barak okay so in this we have to know the examples of missiles and which missile it is and what is the range so from this area yes you can expect a question okay and in this missiles also we have two types so one is ballistic missile and second one is cruise missile so ballistic means if you are firing here it will be taking parabolic path and it will be hitting the target so in this way so there will be the movement of this missile it is ballistic missile so cruise missile is nothing but it will be moving like a rocket to certain distance and from here it will be taking a straight path okay so this is the movement of this cruise missile so you have to see like which missile it is like ballistic or cruise and we have to see different types like whether it is surface to surface or surface to air or air to air missile so this topic is at most important and you can expect a prelims based question from this area right now let us move on to the science page and here there are very important articles so we are going to see this so here you can see a small article that is persistent inflammation in children increases death so here you will be studying about different types of mortalities like neonatal mortality infant mortality under 5 mortality rate so this topic which is related to under 5 years mortality that is under 5 mortality so this article is saying that whenever there is persistent inflammation okay so whenever there is persistent inflammation so it is also one important leading cause for the death so why there is persistent inflammation so because of undernutrition so in the recent study they found that because of this persistent inflammation which is related to this undernutrition it is one of the important cause about 45 percentage of under 5 years of age deaths which are related to this undernutrition okay so this is the thing which mainly said and here one more important concept you can cover here is our united nations have a name to end malnutrition by 2030 so in this context what are the steps that can be taken so you have to suggest some measures again okay, here you can see one more important article that is potential therapeutic agent found for rheumatoid arthritis so this article is talking about arthritis so here arthritis it is a disease which is related to bones 
okay bones so here we have normally two types of arthritis that is osteoarthritis second one is rheumatoid arthritis so this arthritis it is autoimmune disorder okay so this bones related disease which is autoimmune disorder so you have to know what is this rheumatoid arthritis it is related to bones joints okay so this is very important and there are two important articles we are going to see them together okay yeah now let us move to our notes page so here the title says managing our resources with artificial intelligence so here we are studying about this artificial intelligence okay almost like three to four times in a week and this artificial intelligence is very very important and here this article is saying about one more important new application of this artificial intelligence and this topic is important from science and technology which comes under gs paper 3 so if you see context it says that artificial intelligence has helped in monitoring heart problems and we are going to use this for even to check eye conditions and even they are also providing the different treatment options in the field of health sector and even we are also predicting the protein structure and we are going for new drug development or new therapies that we are finding by using this artificial intelligence so in not only in the health sector but even in other sectors like we are predicting cyclones monsoon strength and also even we are having the negative thing that will be like job loss okay job loss is also an important problem because of this increasing of development in this artificial intelligence but there is also one more concern that is privacy issues and misuse of data so first important issue is job loss second one is privacy issue and third one is misuse of data okay so this article is saying that so we are seeing that every year now and then at least one area they are facing floods okay yes or no floods so it may be because of cloudburst it may be because of flash floods or it may be like urban uh, floods or it may be like because of increasing of rainfall in some areas during monsoon so in now and then we are seeing like there is floods in many parts of the country and even we are facing droughts so engineers they have a long dreamt of building links between rivers to mitigate these problems but what happened we are having lot and lots of challenges changes they are there so if you are talking about this article it is saying that we can go for interlinking of rivers for example in the river system we have peninsula river system we have himalayan river system and himalayan river system we have three main rivers that is indus ganga and brahmaputra in peninsula we have west flowing rivers and we have east flowing rivers right so we have to go for interlinking of rivers so this is the thing which mainly said and we are here we are applying artificial intelligence to understand what will be the positive outcome okay so that is the thing here so for nations planners minimizing the water deficit it is a one critical goal because because of this climate change so some areas you are getting heavy rainfall and some areas you are getting very less rainfall so we are also having unpredicted climate change and weather so because of this ensuring of water is very important now so here we can use this artificial intelligence to make the predictions so here recently iit ism dhanbad and nits in tripura and goa they done like examining what would be the positive outcome if you are going for penar palar kaveri link canal okay so this scheme which will be connecting flood prone mahanadi and godavari rivers with deficit rivers further south so this link would aid half a million hectares in a chain of districts from nellore in andhra pradesh to kodalore and tamil nadu so you were talking about what are the objectives here is so this iit nit team presented a model so this is aiming to improve the returns for farms without depleting the ground water or without wasting the water in the rivers and reservoirs so we are going for efficient use of waters so here they used data that has been collected over the years by this national water development agency okay and here they came up with three important things the first one is they will be analyzing the water levels before and after monsoon 
and this one is they will be also analyzing the crop sowing patterns like karib season rabi season so which area we are going for which type of crops and they will be also studying about the minimum support price and the cost benefits to the farmers so these three things they are going to study and ai based modeling effect which finally suggested that so yes we have the favorable outcomes if you are going for few adjustments of the choice of the crops that are growing in the two seasons of july and november okay so this is the thing which mainly said and you can add this is as new application of artificial intelligence and next topic it is about modern contraception yes do you know about this contraception so you may not think that uh, please don't think like madam is talking bold but this contraception is very important because you are adults you are not adult, you are not like kids or you are not like a children so you are going to be the already your citizens right your citizens of india and you have this right to vote everything what not and within the five within 3 to 5 years you are going to be married or within 5 to 8 years you are going to be married right yes you have to know about this contraception contraception is very important so in this article it is talking about increased birth spacing okay so increased birth spacing nowadays the problem here facing especially by women is high risk pregnancies high risk pregnancies so actually after giving birth so after first pregnancy so they have to maintain the minimum gap for second pregnancy so they have to take minimum gap to prepare for this second pregnancy don't go for the second pregnancy immediately so the minimum gap here is more than 18 months of time okay so normally what is happening here is so there is a very short birth spacing that is less than 18 months that is one and a half year between two pregnancies so because of this very short time here so women may not recover properly so why because i will tell you one example so that you can understand what is happening inside the woman so what happened after fertilization okay so there will be attachment that is called as implantation of of this cells that is called as fetus and after that the growth of placenta happens and after this placenta you can you can see like placenta is covered by umbilical cord so after the delivery so you can see uh, like to the new born baby you can see like black or white color cord is there so that is the umbilical cord so what happened here is so whenever the baby is increasing in the size so this umbilical cord will be getting strong so it will be like this much uh, size you can see after the birth so the new born baby so they will be having this umbilical cord so what happens here is so during the birth so if it is a normal vaginal birth so baby will be coming out of the vagina right so what happens along with umbilical cord so we have this placenta right so i'm sorry i have to tell it clearly okay so this is very important concept everyone should know so this is uterus right so we have placenta like this and we have umbilical cord and this is the fetus okay so this is the fetus so this is the umbilical cord so this will be the stomach so here we have this umbilical cord this is placenta like this so what happens so whenever the baby is coming outside some part of this uterus will be also coming out some part of uterus yes it's real some part of uterus like some layers of uterus that will be coming coming along with the birth so because of this if you want to heal this area it will be taking some amount of time yeah so if you are going for the planning of second pregnancy early means so women may not be recovering some women according to their body yes they can go for recovery soon but some women so they will be taking long time okay so the minimum here is at least 18 months of time is very important to go for planning of second pregnancy so if you not taking this much amount of time means women may not recover so that that will leads to high pregnancy risk okay that will leads to high pregnancy risk so this is placenta okay placenta will be like uh, it is for example it is looking like a spleen okay 
and this is umbilical cord so umbilical cord is nothing but after birth of baby you can see to the navel part uh, we can see like white color or sometimes brown color or sometimes black color uh, link will be there so that will be cut okay and yeah this article says that a gap of two to three years between pregnancies is recommended to give a woman enough time to recover and to regain her health strength and nutrients so minimum we have to give around 18 months of time so here normally uh, gynecologists they will be suggesting two to three years of time and currently so normally we have different contraceptive methods that we can use like female contraceptives and male contraceptives like condoms and oral contraceptive pills for example you know about eye pills and emergency contraceptive pills they will be there and intrauterine contraceptive devices and injectable contraceptives and contraceptive tablets okay they are mainly offered to women and most common methods still used in india are female sterilization so that is nothing but the permanently there will be uh, there will be tubectomy for women after pregnancy after delivery they will go going for cutting of uh, tubes fallopian tubes so that they will be not becoming the pregnant in future and also male condoms are also mainly used in india and two new methods are subdermal contraceptive implant and subcutaneous injectable contraceptives has been introduced in the public health programs of for, for some states like under the skin we can have some chips like that so that we will be that will be releasing this con anti contraceptive uh, so contraceptive drugs into the body so that that will be acting as a contraceptive so these are the two new methods and these two new methods they can prevent pregnancy for 3 years subcutaneous and for this subcutaneous injectable contraceptives for 3 and 1/2 years okay 3 to 4 months for one and around 3 years for one uh, one more okay so that here what happen so whenever we are using this contraceptives that will be helpful for regaining of health of women for sure and as one is the important problem here is there is lack of information so there is lack of understanding okay and even there is lack limited engagement with communities regarding this contraceptives and even women they don't feel comfortable empowered to make their choices okay because of patriarchal society and there is also misconceptions and negative experiences misinformation taboos etc like if you are using this contraceptives you are not going to be become pregnant okay further so like that there are misconception negative experience taboos are there but the final this article is saying that yes we have to increase awareness and we have to provide evidence based information so they are the two important key things so that we can encourage women and we can empower the women to take their own decision because becoming pregnant or not so it is a bodily choice of women so they are not at all so uh, they are women they are not at all respected in some societies they are not giving the value for the decisions of women so that here we can go for awareness we can provide some evidence based uh, things here so we have to empower women so that they can make their own choices okay so that is the gist of this article and these are the important articles which appear in our today's newspaper so this is about our analysis and by this i'm concluding and before concluding i want to show you like where can you get the notes of this class so if you want to download the notes you can join the telegram channel that is rathor's is classes so here you can get notes and one more thing here is this is rathor's is academy youtube channel please do subscribe to this channel and this is our website where you can get different courses that you are offering and even we are offering this foundation course for 2025 and 2026 both online and offline so if you want to contact us directly you can come to the office and i gave the office address in this description box and don't forget to rate review rathod's is academy thank you so much for watching